was very general. What? What was my knowledge? Your your knowledge is very general too, right? Yeah. Yeah, very general. In anymore. fact, even um, to the point that I don't trust at all what I'm reading because there's so many opinions. And so now I'm in this place where I'm like, I set everything up according to the Bhagwan map showing the door. And I'm like, but my direction of my door is east. So it could totally screw up the Bhagwan map. So I have no, I feel no confidence at all. Okay. Okay, so here's the thing, and I know exactly um, how you feel because um, I've learned from three different teachers, mm -hmm. and every one almost has something different. Some are more dogmatic than others. Some are more, like, Chinese-oriented than others. Mm -hmm. um, some are more astro astrological-based than others. Mm -hmm. um, and then you end up like just spinning your head around, like you're going like this, <laughs> which direction am I going to go in now, right? So what I've done basically in the way I teach it, and then some are more fear-based than other people. Like if you do it wrong, something bad's going to happen. Like that, that's mm -hmm. just, that's not right at all, mm -hmm. I believe, right? I believe that it should leave you empowered in your space. Mm -hmm. um, and that anytime you feel a little bit of fear, like your home is your sanctuary. So there's no reason why and there are things there's going to be things in life that you cannot control no matter you can have the perfect colors in every single place and have your place punctuate every single year according to the stars according to the astrology and stuff's going to happen that's life that's the reality right um and so this is the thing let's get into it um and then yeah just just keep it an open conversation let me just share my screen um, so I really wanted to sort of start today and you could, you guys can see my screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I really wanted to start, um, today with the number of golden rule and Terry, you'll like this because your organizer is about clearing and preparing the space for feng shui. Um, so feng shui literally translated means uh, wind and water and it is on the philosophy that everything is energy energetically connected that energy is always moving um, that there is a better way to align with your environment to keep things in balance ever flowing it does align with the basic uni universal principles of manifestation, right? Matching your vibrations and frequencies. And of course, no manifestation happens without authentic inspired action. Um, and even that there's still an element of detachment of trust and surrender. And all of these come into play when it comes to, um, you know, powerful feng shui. Okay. Uh, just a little bit about me. So I am a flow genome certified coach. Um, I currently am a, a really, I'm really focusing on the relationship side of coaching. And I have a program called the Magnetic Love Method. I'm a certified feng shui consultant. I do pranic energy healing, which is why I'm familiar with the Akashic Records. Even that I feel like a little bit of um, wary towards because no one can be 100% sure that they've accessed the Akashic Records. And really and truly, we all have access to this power. Accessing the Akashic Records are, is really accessing and listening to your higher self, listening to your intuition. And which is why it goes hand in hand with also becoming, with also being a meditation teacher. And I also uh, do a lot of real estate. Um, on the positive psychology side as well, I'm a master NLP coach, uh, trainer of hypnotherapy, master time mind therapy. And I'm a former fitness trainer to boot on top of that. So I've been in this whole full circle of wellness, whether it's, you know, health and fitness and psychology, energy, um, wealth with real estate and physicality. So I've really come full circle with all of this training. And that's how I coach. I actually am an interdisciplinary coach, which means I take all of these teachings and I take all the underlying universal principles and I match them up and say, you know what, you're just saying the same thing that this is saying, you're just saying in a different language, right? Um, so that, and I have a sticky keyboard. 
Oh, oh, but who I am most is a mom, a husband, a wife to a, um, a girl dad. We have four girls, a blended family. And I also do corporate training, but um, that's who I'm most proud of, regardless of how many letters you have behind your name. <laughs> so when it comes to energies, Feng Shui is the basis of energetic flow. So some people come into this, um, and I actually, not really, I think everyone that looks to Feng Shui has the basis of that we share the same core belief, that energy is everything, that we're all connected. Energy always needs to flow. Energy can be rushed. It can be slowed down. It can stagnate. It's constant, and it can change from one form to another. However, the term energy comes from the Greek origin of inner work, energia. So it does start with ourselves. We are both a physical being um, as well as a spiritual being. We live on a very physical grounded planet with the cosmos. And there is, um, you know, there is, you have to sort of have the underlying belief that there is a higher um, power, a higher knowing, whether it's your just your highest self or God or source energy or astrology or whatever you want, whatever resonates with you. I respect anything that, um, you know, that you choose to resonate with. So for me, it's not um, any form of religious at all. It really is about the cycle of life. It's reconnecting to the earth and the fact that we're not separate from that. We actually are the earth. Our body composition is the same. When we go back down and there's a saying, you know, ashes to ashes, we will return to the earth, we will return. Because our body composition, and I know this from fitness training, is that when we're reduced to ashes, and you look at the mineral composition of our ashes, it is in sync with that of the earth. We have the same amount of calcium, Water, when we're alive, 75% water, the earth is covered with 75% water, calcium, phosphorus, all of those minerals that are in our bones, in our ashes, are the same as the earth's crust. It's really fascinating. So we forget so many times that we're disconnected. Feng Shui is also really, really big on the cycle and the flow of life, which often is yin and yang. It is a Tao, a Taoist principle, but the concept of yin and yang is the fact that no matter how, you know, there's always going to be light with the dark and everything works together. Western society, it's, it's or, you're dark or you're light. But in, in this principle, it's and, everything works together, everything serves a purpose. So just going, and the whole aspect of yin and yang is actually like a whole day course in itself. So, um, right now we're in winter. Um, right now we're in winter, which is yin energy. It's cool. It's cold. It's inward. We have the animals and everything hybrate. Everything retreats into the ground. And the bottom, the white part, the largest white part here is the greater yin. Right now we're in the greater yin. And slowly we move into spring, and which would be halfway between the white and the, um, I don't know, can you see my nose? Okay. Which would be, um, oops. Slowly we move into the greater, like springtime would be halfway. And then summer is here, the greater yang energy. And then fall is here, moving back into yin and then so on. And again, everything serves a purpose for something to rejuvenate uh, to come alive again, every death means a birth. So this is the principle of, um, of Taoism. It's also one of the core principles in Feng Shui, which a lot of people overlook, unfortunately. It is trying to achieve this harmonious balance within your space. And of course, energy is not new to any cultures at all. And here are various ways that we can um, talk about energy or life force energy around the world. Um, there's different words for different um, different phrase, uh, different cultures. So pranas for Hindus, ki is to Japanese and so on. Um, 
chi is what we use in, in feng shui because it's, um, the origin is Chinese from China. So, and this is going back to what Cherry was saying earlier too, is that, you know, you're afraid to doing it wrong. But for me, it's really about practicality. Um, my husband's been a really great sport, but there are times where he, he'll say, no, I'm not doing that. It doesn't make any sense. It absolutely needs to be functional and it has to make sense for your life. So I'm not the kind of feng shui teacher who's going to tell you to put your bed in the hallway. <laughs> and I've heard some crazy stories of people doing really weird stuff. It absolutely has to flow and placement comes first and, and then the elements come after. So the way I teach it is that I've taken all the universal principles and I've applied it um, to feng shui and kind of not discounting because again, everyone has different beliefs. But really just emphasizing what is universally taught and everything else is solely up to you and how it makes you feel above all how do it as long as it empowers you when something feels disempowering i say i don't even put it out there if it feels disempowering if it feels scary we're already living in a very fear-based society there's no reason for us to implement any more fear especially when it comes to our home so again, um, it, the origin is in China and originated 6,000 years ago. Um, the Indian version sort of is Vastu Shastra and that's more of an architectural type of feng shui. It's kind of evolved from then. It was actually um, first brought out to, to plan the burial sites of the royal, royalty and elite. Um, and then it soon realized that it actually worked very well to plan in their um, the palaces and also as an environment. So if you look at a lot of the major older cities in China, it's very, um, it's, it's the location is very conducive to feng shui. So you have a mountain in the background, which is like your supporting energy. It's like a big hug, right? In the front, you'll have a flowing river in front of you. Again, uh, embracing the flow of water energy coming through your home, but not too much water. Um, the, you know, the combination of wind and water can either can be destructive or it can be like a perfect day at the beach. Um, for the longest time, it was only reserved for royalty and elite. And in fact, when um, communist China took over in the 1950s, a lot of the feng shui people had to leave or go underground. It was not accepted as a method. They wanted to keep the people, um, you know, lower. So they didn't want anyone practicing any kind of any kind of feng shui, um, Taoism, the Tao Te Ching, any kind of so-called divination techniques, everything became illegal and had to go underground. So a lot of the teachings were initially lost. Um, but then they were also based on, you know, there was no scientific fact to it back then either. It was purely um, intuitive. So once again, going, going, to energy, everything is energy, there's all is to it, as um, Albert Einstein has said, and match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. And this is what I believe is that you're matching the frequency of the five elements. And in feng shui, it's fire, water, earth, metal, and um, wood as the five element. And this is also prevalent in um, traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. So again, the same thing, everything, every color has a frequency. The frequency of metal is different from the frequency of wood. The frequency of earth will be different from water. The frequency of fire is different from, from all of it. So there's definitely a certain vibration um, a certain vibration to every element that you put in your home. Obviously, the more alive it is, the better. Um, and I personally like to do, I've done both. I've done Western Feng Shui, which doesn't take into account the direction at all. It's just placement in your home. Um, but I played with it and I personally find taking into account the direction is very powerful. So that um, the North energy is, is water, um, east is earth. So every direction has its own element associated with it. Um, 
So it's up to you whether or not you want to do, you don't want to include, either you, you include the directions or you just include the element. That's a first and foremost difference between Western and classical feng shui. Um, so how I like to view uh, feng shui personally in the manifestation of your goals is basically where are you directing your energy and how can feng shui help you with your goals? So there's your metaphysical reality. There's your thoughts. There's your dreams. There's your vision. There's your goals. And you have all of these thoughts coming out. Your thoughts are also very electrical. Your heart is a magnetic energy. So it's out there. It's out there from your past life. It's out there from, from source energy, from God. It's a, it's a realm of pure potential. And then you, you download it into your thoughts, visions, and dreams. The only thing that's blocking you is really your own past conditioning, your own limiting beliefs, your past hurt, your self-criticism, and your fear. Um, feng Shui is, is in between that, your physical reality and Feng Shui. For me, I've used Feng Shui to anchor my goals, my vision into my reality with the power of the elements, with the power of the directions. So this is how I've used Feng Shui to really anchor my goals into my physical reality, specifically into my home and into my office. So Feng Shui helps you to clear the block. It helps you with inspired action. It helps you with the flow of energy, thus giving you whatever it is that you, you dream of, joy, freedom, wealth, love, health, and family. Those are, that's where Feng Shui, that's Feng Shui's place between the seen and the unseen, the unseen and the seen. You can really use your home as a, a spring ground, right? It's the nesting ground. It's where you recover and it's also where you create. It's where you rejuvenate and it's where you get energized. So really being able to incorporate feng shui in those two realities is so key. Because your home is where your heart is. It's home where it's where you're going to go to every, each and every day. And I know you're resonating with this, Terry, because you're, you <laughs> help people organize everything. When their home's a mess, it's like, Things aren't moving around properly. They're not functioning well. Your, your mind is cluttered. So when it comes to feng shui, they, it's called the cosmic energy. So we talked about sort of the, um, you know, the cosmos, God, and I like to call it basically your life path. There is a, an astrolog astrological component because there is, let's call it a branch of feng shui, that believe that the stars and astrology have a, they actually bring the astrology stars into your home as well, onto this, onto the planet, onto the earth, into your earth realm. So for me, I take it as seriously as I take the zodiac sign. So everybody's different. Some people like love their astrologer. They'll, they'll go pay an astrologer, you know, a couple of hundred dollars every some every order every year to find out their chart right yeah so it's really up to you like for me it's not so much I like the zodiac signs I resonate with my particular zodiac sign but I don't use the horoscope some people really use it as a compass um I particularly don't I mean I might use it as an umbrella like if it's raining, I might, you know, put the umbrella. If it looks like it's going to rain, I'll put an umbrella. I'll, I'll bring an umbrella with me, whether I use it or not. Um, but I don't particularly always use it as a compass because I find it very restricting for me. I find that it's, again, it's a little bit disempowering for me. But it is kind of, yeah, it's kind of signposts. You look out for those signposts. And then there's earth energy. And... Really and truly, we are one with the earth energy. And then there's your pers personal human energy. I like to bank most of my weight. Um, I like to put most of my money into the human energy of things. But knowing that I can't control everything, knowing that we are one with the planet. And all of this really means that we're all just one. And we're all just trying to walk each other home, right? Like that's essentially what what we all want for our lives so once again I have to 
have to emphasize that whatever empowers you the most is the best route to go and stay away from anything that that disempowers you and that instills fear in your way of being. The only thing you can control is your own thoughts, is your own heart. You can control the planet, the environment around you to some extent. Um, to some extent, obviously, we don't know what Mother Nature has in store for us. And you certainly can't control what's up there in the stars or in your life path. You just, but you, you can control your energy and how you react and how you interact with all of these other forces. So again, I believe that your inner world creates your outer world, outer world. So an inspired action and empowered mindset is the bridge between your dream to reality. And I really wanted to spend a lot of time here um, because people think that feng shui is like that magic stick. I just have to put something in this, in this area and it's going to bring me, it's going to rain money on me. I wish it was that easy. Um, it, it's not, but it does help anchor. It does anchor your mindset, it anchors your dream into your physical space and we'll get into how that does that. So the first and foremost golden rule of feng shui is to clear the clutter. So I love this um, meme here, closing the closet doors makes the mess go away, said no feng shui consultant ever. <laughs> so clear your clutter. And um, now we have Terry here, if you want any advice on the best way to do it. <laughs> so for me, because um, I've worked for pre professional organizers often, um, and they also come to me for feng shui advice as well. Everyone knows that there's, um, well, not everyone knows, but I didn't realize actually that you have your own personal way of organizing. There's the people that like to shut, you know, close it and forget it. Or like me, if I close the door, if I close the cupboard, I'm going to forget it's there and then I'll go shop again for it. I'm, I personally like, I'm an open storage person. I like to see what I have. Otherwise, I'll forget it's there. And I've learned this um, over the years, although I've, Although having things out in the open kind of look clutter. So I've been now labeling things and things like that. Um, so, and this is also a huge principle in, um, sorry, I just, I think someone's trying to get on here. This is also a huge principle in, um, hold on. Um, Sab, can you text me the link so I could forward it to somebody? on my phone quickly, so I don't have to go in here. Um, so this is also a huge principle in energy healing, is actually you must clear before you energize. You have to clear your space before you energize your space. Feng Shui is energetic, so it's energizing. Um, so you must clear before, and then you could begin your feng shui. There's no point of doing feng shui in a very extreme, extremely um, cluttered home. So we'll go over um, some of the psychology of clutter. Like, why is it that you're afraid to let go of things? Those are, that's a huge thing. You're afraid to let go because you don't trust. You're afraid to let go because you have a, a scarcity mindset you're afraid to let go because you're um you're afraid you're never going to get it again so again that's going back to questioning how you feel about scarcity and how you truly feel about abundance do you trust when you let go of things that you will always have what you need so those are things that you need to look at when you're trying to understand why you hold on to things are, are you putting too much meaning and value into physical items do you find validation in your physical items? Because you can't take it with you when you're gone. So what is it that you, you know, I mean, shop, shopping is a real addiction. And it's no other, it's no um, different than, um, hold on, sorry. It's no different from, you know, alcohol addiction or a gambling addiction. You're trying to escape something and you're putting your value into something else. And in this case, it would be, it would be things around your house. So let me just copy this. Um, so let's get into some space clearing techniques. Um, okay, so we won't do that yet. So um, 
Cherry, can you tell me if you have any, do you do any of this stuff to you with space clearing techniques or? Say that again. Do you do anything in terms of like clearing your space energetically with your clients? Um, I do. It's funny. I bring a kit. It depends on how open my clients are. So my business is called Home Solutions, S-O-U-L. So in that triangle you talked about, I'm really big on the top portion. Um, and I really, that's where my base is, is working with spirit. But some clients aren't open to that. You know, they're just like, I just want you to help me clear my space. Don't talk about all that woo-woo stuff, right? So, but for the ones that are open, I bring a clearing kit, which is actually like a little um, bin with a pie tin, Epsom salt, rubbing alcohol, and matches. And then I do the actual clearing where we put the, the Epsom salt in the pie tin and we put the alcohol, rubbing alcohol, light a match and burn it in the space. And then I call in the light and it's not religious. It, again, it's also calling in universal intelligence, divine order, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So that's actually one of the things that, um, that I do, but I do like to also put in, um, a bit of the science around it. So yeah. salt is actually very, it, you know, it's a very well-known antiseptic, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's, it's nature's way of clearing things. It's also nature's way of um, bringing light to things, right? Mm -hmm. I remember the Pope on World Youth Day, the, one of the tags for World Youth Day is the youth are the salt of the earth. It mm -hmm. gives flavor to everything, mm -hmm. right? It enhances flavor. So there is a, a scientific benefit as well as an energetic benefit to using salt. So one of the best ways for um, to clear your space Hello. I think it froze. Actually, is salt. So you could do the salt burn, uh, and then you would actually just put salt on the ground. And I'm very, very intentional with it. So because you're, again, I'm big on the your own personal energy, I really um, intend, and I actually declare that the salt is absorbing anything that no longer serves me, and that it's also cleaning and disinfecting anything that no longer serves me from this life, from my past life, and for anyone that's been in this space as well. And so I'll sprinkle the salt around the house, um, and then I'll vacuum it up or sweep it up. Um, you know, I'll either flush it down the toilet if it's not too much chunks that you're sweeping up, obviously. If it's just dust and stuff, I'll put it down the toilet so it flushes away and out of the house. I won't dump it on the front door or anything like that or in my garbage. And then the garbage is okay if the garbage is going out right away, outside of your home right away. Um, but I tend to like to flush it down the, um, down the toilet so it's flushed out and away from your house. And um, what else is there? Um, yeah, so that is one way to use salt. Yeah. Marcy, I know you came for this part, so I hope you're, you're listening. I'm just <laughs> Questions. Uh, just wondering, do you where do you put the salt? I just sprinkle it, like on their floor. Yeah, on the floor, and I vacuum it up. Okay, I wasn't sure if you said because I use Epsom salt in the pie tin, but I never thought about sprinkling it around. So that's very interesting. Yeah, I use I use regular salt. Regular yeah, cheap the cheap tea. So you just sprinkle it around your house, like different areas. Is that what it is? Yes. Yes. Okay. And you can also use your your intuition, like. Um, you know, if you feel like a heavier energy in a certain area of your home, you can add a little bit more. Um, the second thing with the salt is you actually, and I like to do this whenever, and this is a very a huge pranic healing uh, technique as well, um, is that you have like a vase or a bucket of salt. So I'll use like, well, here's a vase here actually, but this is a small one. But it's a, it's a little bit more um, aesthetic, let's say. But I also have, like, those plastic dollar store garbage cans. And if I'm feeling really stuck or if I'm feeling, um, like, a big lull in my body or my energy, if my husband and I are fighting, if my kids and I are fighting, 
I'll fill up a vase of water or a bucket of water and I'll put salt in it and I'll leave it in the corner of her room. And again, I also say, I also, um, I also declare and I intend that this, that salt water is absorbing any negative energy. So um, that's one of the things that I do to clear my space. And again, after a day or two, I'll dump the water out into um, into the into the toilet. So again, it's really just um, intending that that space, that any negative energy that's lingering in the house, you may have even brought it home with you. Someone may have come into the house. Well, lately we haven't had a lot of visitors to the house, <laughs> but somebody could have deposited their negative energy into your home. Um, so I do this when I'm sick. I do this when I'm having a fight. I do this um, after I clean up, after having a lot of people over. Um, it's also good to do this uh, at the, you know, at the full moon, at the full moon as well, because the full moon is very energizing. It's magnetizing. So you want to make sure that your space is also clear. So you do that once. You could do it as many as often as once a month with every full moon phase as well. And again, it's really intending that that salt water acts as a as an energetic antiseptic for your space. Um, the other one is uh, sage, which is typically used, is very much used in um, a lot of indigenous cultures and a lot of other even religions. Is the the aspect of sage, and now it's also scientifically proven that burning sage is also antibacterial. So. You know, there, there was a science to it after all these thousands and thousands of years of all these cultures burning sage, it actually is um, antibacterial as well. Um, but it's also a very, you know, it's also a very revered plant as with Palo Santo. It's considered, Palo Santo is considered a very sacred wood, just the energy of that tree, um, that Palo Santo can't be burned until it's actually like it kind of passes and falls. And that's when the natural oils come out of that, that sacred tree. So again, and also making sure that you get your, um, your sage and your Palo Santo from sustainable, um, sustainable places. So you wanna honor that energy that you're carrying with it into your home. So Palo Santo and sage is also something that you can um, go to every corner of the room of your home. Oh. Before all of this too, always try to have, well, we're in the middle of winter in Canada, but for those in the warmer countries, you can make sure your windows are open whenever you're doing any clearing, even if your windows are a little bit open. So if I burn sage, I always crack open the window a little bit. Or Palo Santo, I always crack open the window a bit because again, energy has to go somewhere and you want to make sure that it's going out of the out out of your house, all the negative energy is going out of the house. So you, when it comes to clearing, you wanna do that. So you wanna make sure the windows are open and then just go around with the sage and just sort of, you know, push the smoke to the corners of your home. And again, really doing this with intention, put on some good music, really also elevating your own personal vibration. Um, Another way of space clearing actually is to clap. Clap at every corner of your house. Um, clapping is not, a, not only elevating your own vibration because, because of the sound that it's making, but it's also a celebratory feeling, right? It's movement. It's also moving your own personal vibration. So clapping around every corner of your house as well. And it's also moving out stagnant energy from the corners of your home. So that's another good way to get the energy flowing back into your home. And the, I think I mentioned almost everything except for the blessing of your home. So almost every um, a major religion or culture has some sort of housewarming, have some sort of um, house blessing, whether it's your priest or your pastor or um, you know your rabbi or whatever, but whenever you have, um, you want to you know definitely again attending and blessing your home. And actually, if we have time, I think we do. We will. We will. Um, we'll do a. We'll do a blessing of our homes together 
on this call, which I really wanted to do. Because again, it's the same thing, Terry, as you were saying, is that we get to, um, you know, ask for guidance. We get to, again, can reconnect with our higher selves, reconnect with the divine and have this flow through us, clear our bodies, become this channel of clearing energy and then bringing it out to your own home. We forget to do that. Well, you know, we've been taught to bless our food. We've been taught to say grace before meals. We've been taught to be grateful, but we don't often intentionally do it for our home using our own energy. So we'll do that um, in a few minutes too. So just going, so that's it for the clearing space. And if anybody wants help with personal organization, Terry can help us. <laughs> and, okay, oh, here we go. So just to quickly go over the Bagua, um, if you haven't downloaded this already, um, I like, again, I like the energy, the, the compass direction because the sunrise in the east is different from the sunset in the west. The north winds are different from the south winds. So I really, um, I really like to be in tune with that energy. So again, it's really picking both. You either use the um, compass directions or you don't use it at all. Um, so east, east is with the wood element. Southeast is wood element. Um, south is fire, makes sense because it's southern tends to be warm, it's a fire energy. Southwest is earth. West is metal. Um, helpful people in travel is also metal. And north is water. So there's only two areas that use water is only with the north and fire is only with the south. And then wood is used a couple of times. Wood is in the southeast and east. And oh, sorry, north um, east is also earth, and the center of your home is actually earth. So, we're going to go over the elements, but I just want to, sh as well, we're going to go just, we're just going to do fire today because there's a ton of stuff here, and I still can't even teach it all. But the first and foremost thing when it comes to feng shui is um, the art of placement. So, I'll just show you how to quickly grid the grid your home. Um, so you can either do it like this, kind of overlay that bagua over your home. Um, and again, it doesn't matter where your front door is when you're using classical feng shui. It just matters where the directions are. So that's the difference. Um, but you do have to find out what direction is your front door. So by doing that is you start, um, so you would start at the front door. So you would look out the front door with your compass and look out to the street and that's the direction. So you put, so if it's east, you put it this way. If it's west, you would turn it that way. Oh, sorry, you can't see my hands, <laughs> but <laughs> you keep forgetting. Um, if it's, I've only ever retaught this live in person too. So if your front door is west, you would turn this turn this map around to the west. Is that clear now, Terry? Okay, so what where does your front door face? It's just funny because like this is where I get completely like frozen. But my door, like when I look out my door, I'm facing east because the sun's coming up in the morning. Okay. Out my and I'm in an apartment, by the way. So the yes. Yeah. So you would just use your front door of your unit. And that would be east. So then I would have to, the thing is I set up all my things based on the map without knowing the directions. And so I like the corners are, it's a very tiny place. So I'm very limited. I can't like re put the bathroom somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like, so, yes. it's, I, so I just don't know. And I feel the superstitious thoughts like, oh no, now it's going to all be wet messed up. But I think I need to just let that go. I yeah, so yours, you, yours would be very much close to this then. East would be, um, and obviously there is, you know, you would just look up what east, the true direction of east is. I don't have it memorized, but um, north is zero degrees, right? I think northeast is, starts at 222 or something. 
Yeah. Um, but you would just look up. So it would be very similar to this, but this would be, yeah. your east would be yeah. there. And that's it. But Marcia, what about you? Do you know what your front door is? Are you there? Um, yeah. When I step into my home, I face the east. Okay, so let's say it's west then. Because you're actually, you start from looking out your door. Okay, so when I look out the door, it is west. Oh, you're facing east. Yeah, so it's west. Yeah. So yours is the opposite here. You would start west here, and then your east would be back there. So basically, every little section of your home has its own compass direction. But you have to be facing outside the door. That's where it gets confusing. Do I face in the door, in the room, or out the face out the door? And that's your facing direction. So it's always the the direction that you're facing is how you recognize it. Yes. So it's east. So you basically put the com you um you said it's west, right? So um, Terry's is like this, more like this. And yours is the opposite. You would turn the west. So you, your west would be here, um, okay, and then northwest. But then, worst comes to worst, you could go also go to every corner of your home, face the front of the house where the front is, and find out what direction you're, you're in now, um, in that corner, like going backward. So, but yeah. So facing the front of your home is where you overlay this boggle map. So your front door would be here, um, Terry. And you said yours is west or yours is east too, Marcia? West. Facing, east facing the west. west. You would yeah, face. There. You would turn your house this way. Oh. I should have another example of a opposite. So, okay, so, okay, now I see the west, yeah. Yeah, okay. If, you're, if you don't want to do the compass directions, it's, really simple. It's just where your door is. Um, and let me show you the difference there. Um, okay. Ooh, pretty. So this is... Um, yeah, that's how I base mine. Yeah. This is if you're not using compass directions at all. Yeah. The front of the house is here. The front door is here. And then you just so put it like this. So I have a question on that, Ivy, because to me that's very different than using the directions. How do how could both possibly work? Is it just your belief in them that makes it work? Um, the way it works is the elements. Mm. So the wealth is a wood element always. Yeah, but if my if I'm if I'm doing it based on directions, that wouldn't be my wealth corner. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm yes. So, so if you're doing it in the wood direction, your wealth wood corner. Oops. It would be in the directions. It'd be something different. Yes, it's wherever the west. Um, yeah. So sorry, that's my southeast. Wealth is southeast, but it's still wood. Southeast okay. Wood, wealth wood, but it's the southeast wood. So for the. Um, other map it's just the back left corner of your house wood well right but in this situation it's actually the right corner and that's not at all set up for wealth so i'm so confused yes yeah, so you have to pick which one you brought which one you feel more resonant with okay. right because well because neither of them is is bad it's just whatever okay, thank you thank you right? for saying that i think i have a bit of a superstition about it like oh my god no yeah. it's all backwards <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess it's whatever, like, you know, you resonate with both. Cause, cause yeah. a lot of times people, it doesn't work in some people's houses. I think this is why the Western thing came about, right? Is because yeah. you can't always go by the direction doesn't usually make sense sometimes with the way that your house is built. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I know you said that Ivy, but I appreciate it being, you know, hearing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I know some people who like I actually know feng shui consultants who've switched they switch from classical to Western because of their own personal house. They're like, their house is on a real angle. Like their front door is like Northeast ish. Hmm. So they're like, Oh, this is, this is not working for me. Like it's too hard for me to do. So they just completely for, for forfeited the direction and went with strictly Western. Hmm. Um, and like I said, I started off doing Western. Um, 
And I just, yeah, I just slowly resonated more with, um, but again, experiment with it. Mm -hmm. If you're starting off, you're right now, it seems like you're starting off with Western. So if that is, you know, if that's very clear for you, mm -hmm. um, then you can stick with it. But if you really, you know, I think I like the fact that you do have an east facing door. It's kind of nice that you can open the door and the sunrise is there. Mm -hmm. So that eastern energy of the sunrise is very powerful and coming in. It's yeah. not as like ambiguous as like a north east door or something, which which is not good or bad, but it's just nice to have that powerful sunlight when you open your front door, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's just really what you what you're feeling inside, but just pick one and pick it powerfully. Um, so I particularly like um, the east, the the, the classical mm -hmm. feng shui. Um, so when it comes, so can I ask to one question? Sorry, can I ask yeah. one question? So back to that first. Uh, so basically, like these are like the way your front door is situated and then you're saying that these are the trends that follow them is that what it is yes like, so um if your front door faces east the yeah. center is simple the center is always the real center of your home is always earth yeah and then you would just so say for example your living room is predominantly your front door is east and then you go to the left of your door and your living room happens to be there or could be your bedroom there yeah then you're then that is now the southeast corner the wood element okay got it okay yeah just wanting to clarify yeah yeah so you would turn this according to wherever your front door is starting okay with that. so um, oh oh that yeah, I was going to say, so if your front door is east, then like the right, if you're facing your front door, the right side would have been whatever that fire section. Yeah. Or whatever it was. Okay. Oh, southeast. Depends. There's a southeast. Okay, right, right. right. On and then to the, right okay. But basically, if your front door is east, then your back directly behind your front door is west. So that's yeah. pretty. Okay. I always start with the cardinal directions first, because it's the most simple. Um, and then you start going in the middle of so for me, I really only focus on now, I really only focus on the wealth section and the career and life section. Um, like, you know, it depends. If I'm having problems with my kids, I'll focus on the west section of my home um, because I want to, you know, I want to send some energy to my kids or, you know, get use some energy for my kids. If I'm having problems in my um, marriage, again, everything's cyclical. You're going to have your dark days with everything. So when I'm having, you know, when I'm going through a, like a bad run with my husband, I'll focus on the Southwest relationship part, mm -hmm. right? So I'll send that energy wherever it's required. And every, and just knowing again, it's cyclical. You'll do what you can um, and it will pass. It will pass. Um, so placement is really big in the home. Um, Usually I always have a few realtors in, in here too. In one of my, in my workshop, I've always got a couple of realtors in here. Um, but this number one T-junction is probably the most, um, so if you're buying a home or you're, you're with somebody who's buying a home, this is the number one here, probably the biggest sort of um, determinant for, for people is to have that, um, to be in the T-section of a home. And um, this is because of rushing energies. Remember I said energy can move slow or fast or uh, stagnate. Um, and again, it's all about the steady, easy flow of energy. Nothing too fast, nothing too slow, nothing stagnant and always welcoming. So this is a rushing energy. Same if this is a clashing energy. Call the sax too, you'd be surprised. How many feng shui consultations I've done on a cul de sac? It's it's fascinates me. I was like, where do you live? I live on a cul de sac. Oh my god, you're like the third person who called me this year on a cul de sac. Again, the energy is stagnant. It's just circling around and around and around. Um, so there are ways to remedy this. Um, obviously, we can't get into every single way. So it's kind of good as a small group because usually at this point, it's like, okay, I live on this side of the cul de sac. Um, and then the dead end street, again, because energy is, is an abrupt, abrupt um, stop. 
So we're getting so placement is really the second um, sort of golden rule of feng shui is a placement of um, major items in your in your in each room. So this is a typical like ideal placement is that you don't want the stove right beside the sink. Um, it's fire and water element clashing energy. Little things like that. The fridge is. Um, Cooling is also water energy, cooling, because you need water to cool. You don't want that, that side by side. But I mean, really, truly, it's also very functional. It doesn't always work to have your, your fridge right beside the stove. But if you live in a smaller home, which I've done, there is a remedy you can do. Um, and when in doubt, just use plants are also a good um, remedy for a lot of things because it keeps, it buffers, your plant buffers energy, and it's also energizing. And then if you really want to get picky, which I, which I start to do with um, personal consultation, is I put a plant in a particular pot, whether it's a clay pot or a metal pot or a color. Mm -hmm. So those are the things. It's the element and it's the color as well, because every color has its own frequency. I think purple, the color purple has the fastest um, frequency. And I think either blue or red has the slower, slowest frequency. I think actually red might have the slower frequency, which is why, um, yeah, which is why it slows us down at night. And stop, also sold the color for stopping, right? Like slow down, stop, red. So it might be one of the slower frequencies. I know somebody corrected me on one of my functional videos. On my science teacher said that it was actually red. <laughs> it was okay. Um, so now that we'll get into furniture placement. Um, and what time is it? Okay. Um, and basically there's always something called the command center. So the entrance way of your living room, for example, you want to be facing it in the main area. And you also want it to be able to flow through your home. So this is blocking energy right here. This one here is a little bit rushing energy, it rushes, somewhere and kind of nowhere. But again, this is kind of, this is actually better than this because you get to see the front door. It puts you in the command position. This is definitely a blocking energy, number four. And number five too, it's a circular energy. It's kind of going anywhere. You always need it to flow and move around. So this, this is why the front door is a very important part of your home when it comes to feng shui. If all else, just get the front door right. <laughs> So which I didn't understand which are those are advised. Um, this this is two and four are probably um, the least ideal. Okay. The best one is one uh -huh. um, and five and, and three is not as ideal, but it's better than two and four. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to use the word good or bad either. Right. I used, I used, I'll say ideal or not least ideal because you can't always control everything. You want to do your best to try and open up the space. And that you have to, you have to, um, you know, have proper furniture according to your space as well, right? Which is not always possible as for like me and you need like every three years. <laughs> this is the longest I've ever been in the house actually. So again, this is the um, kitchen. Um, ideal here is that when you're at the stove, you want to be, be able to see the front, the entrance. So my house is not ideal because um, the, when I'm standing at my stove, my back is to the main entrance way of the kitchen. So ideally you'd, you'd wanna put a mirror there as well so you could see behind you. And so it's also a good idea to have a mirror in front of your stove because mirror uh, stove is considered abundant energy. It's where you're cooking your food and it's fire. It's vibrant. It's um, it's abundance with food and replenishment. So it's also also nice to have um, ideal to have a, a a small mirror in front of your stove. Use one of those sticky two-way tape. Um, and the next one is yeah. So there's earth, fire, wood. Oops. Um. But we're going to go over earth element. And it's, can everyone, does everyone want to stay for the meditation? You don't have to do it, but I thought it'd be nice. To well, I want to, I would love to continue more, but you're going to do more tomorrow, right? Yes, yes. 
Okay. Cause I'm going to have to hop off soon. Do you know how long it'll be? Um, no, I could end now. I oh, no, I mean, don't, don't do it for me, but I'm just saying, I'm very excited. I love what you're doing. Okay, good. That's good to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I also have to hop off soon um, in about 10 minutes or so. But. Okay, so, well, today I covered clearing and energy and um, the directions and placement of the Bagua. Um, so we could start with the elements tomorrow. And if, if there's a small group, again, I could double it up so that we can, we don't, we don't have to repeat everything. If somebody missed it, then that's too bad. Um, but I would love to do it as a group. Um, sort of an energetic kind of meditation and energizing for our home. If you guys are up to it. I love it. I'm planning to be nice. the rest of the week. So. Okay. okay. Be okay. So, did you want to do that? Yeah. Are you, are you guys okay for the next 10 minutes? Terry and Mercy? Yeah. Yeah. I'm good for 10 minutes. Okay.